there's a tendency to think of of um AI as having hit uh, having sort of a light switch effect like there was before AI and now we're after AI and yeah. and particularly the last 6 months have, have really changed how people think about it and 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 act on it but in some ways lemonade from day 1 has been thinking and planning and architecting for this this phase that we're in now and the phase that is to come which is to say we're we're built on a fully integrated digital substrate to enable uh, us to use whatever the most um most data-driven, efficient tools available are to bring the product to the customers. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's in some ways, it's hard to say where data and technology and algorithms end and AI and machine learning begin. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and how we think about internally is, is much more of a continuum. The more that we can leverage data, and it might be slow moving, simpler data, like what's happening with our customers or what's happening with claims out in the market today, or it can be very complex, rapidly developing data like telematics for our car insurance product, or it can be data that we don't really even perfectly understand yet, like AI, where it's it's so far beyond what, it, what the human brain can understand, yet we've architected a system to be able to take advantage of those data points mm -hmm. and flow that into our product, flow that into how we understand the risks of our customers. And again, that's the fundamental core of, of what insurance is, is how can you adapt to and ingest the, the the most valuable tools, the most helpful data, and then translate that into the, the core of the product, which is how risky is this customer and how much do you want to charge them? And how can you create a, a profitable relationship with that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think that's a good analogy with the light switch. It certainly doesn't pay to think of AI as something that was off previously and now on all of a sudden. But um your CEO did describe or at least make an interesting comparison, I think, uh, to the advent of the new age in insurance with the scientific revolution of the 15 to 1600s. He he made the point that if insurance is fundamentally at its core, which I think actually you, you referenced a moment ago, the business of monetizing statistics and data, uh, today's AI revolution must mark a new inflection point, just as that scientific revolution did back in the 17th century. So um, I'm keen to understand, and I'm sure our listeners are as well, are we likely to see similar product offerings and Lemonade competitors launch in the near term as a result of that as a result of that context? So I, I think there's a there's an inherent advantage that that we have and others that might have similar traits have, which is uh, newness. So uh, one of the one of the real challenges of traditional insurance companies <clears throat> is, is also one of their strengths, which is age. And what happens uh, yeah. when you've been around for for decades, uh, if not centuries, which many incumbent uh, insurers have been, you you have the strengths of that. You have the you have the brand, you have the balance sheet, you have the customer trust. But on the other hand, you have you you, you can struggle a lot with the technology aspect and the data aspect. It's very common that systems are cobbled together over years or, or decades. And that really can impinge on the ability to take advantage of mm. AI or or more intense data availability. And so, yeah, I think it's in some ways it's easier or more attractive for a new newcomer to come to the market, mm -hmm. but it's hard. Uh, yeah. It's not um, the, there, there's a reason there aren't 50 or 80 lemonades out in the world. It's capital intensive. We've we've been very successful at raising capital to fund and, and build and grow the business. It takes you know deep insurance expertise, and we've got some people on board that that bring decades of experience. We've done that. You have to bring all those things together, uh, and and that's made it a market which is really attractive for us. Which is again, there's not dozens and dozens of folks doing this, there's, but there's a handful I think who are doing well. From a product perspective, it feels like no one's ahead of us. From a mm -hmm. customer experience uh, standpoint, the we're relatively small. And so we do have the challenges of of scale. We're not yet profitable. And so our focus is really about how do we leverage these tools, whether it's AI or otherwise, build the customer base, get to scale and, and get to profitability.